This video demonstrates how to use the NX Editor software to create and run a test program. We will use the tutorial wire harness and fixture that are provided as part of the Getting Started Kit. If you recently purchased your first NX tester, you should have received the Getting Started Kit in the same shipment as the tester. This is the tutorial wire harness and fixture. The tutorial wire harness contains an example of several common elements found in production wire harnesses and it helps to demonstrate the NX Editor's features for programming the different components and elements. Here is a schematic of the tutorial wire harness. The harness has four connectors. They're labeled A, B, C, and D. The harness also includes a splice, a diode, a resistor, and two double connections. One of the double connections is on one side of the resistor, the other double connection is on pin 2 of connector A. The fixture board for the tutorial wire harness contains a fixture block for each of the harness connectors. It is also equipped with detection switches on fixture block C and fixture block D. Each of these detection switches is normally open. It will close when its associated harness connector is firmly seated on the fixture block. A complete description of the tutorial harness and how to program it using the NX Editor is provided in the Getting Started Guide. This guide is part of the Getting Started Kit. After launching the NX Editor, this is what you see. The NX Editor provides several different views. Upon startup, you see the Fixture Blocks view. To go from one view to another, simply use the arrows on either side of the view indicator. The very first step in creating a program in the NX Editor is to define the fixture blocks. So always start in the fixture blocks view. Let's take another look at the tutorial fixture board layout. There are four fixture blocks with the following characteristics. Fixture block A has three pins. Fixture block B has four pins. Fixture block C has four pins and one detection switch. Fixture block D has three pins and one detection switch. To enter the information for these fixture blocks, make sure you're in the fixture blocks view. And to add the first fixture block, press the green Add button. The Add Fixture Block window appears. In the Name field, enter A. And enter 3 for the number of pins. That's all the information you need to enter for fixture block A. Press OK. The Fixture Blocks view now shows Fixture Block A with three pins, labeled 1, 2, and 3. Press the green Add button again to enter the information for Fixture Block B. In the Name field, enter B, and enter 4 for the number of pins. Then press OK. Notice that the Fixture Blocks table now shows the information for Fixture Blocks A and B. Press Add again to enter the information for Fixture Block C. Enter C in the Name field and enter 3 for the number of pins. Since Fixture Block C has a detection switch, enter 1 for the number of switches. Then press OK. Notice that the detection switch now appears for Fixture Block C. By default, it is labeled SW1. Press Add again to enter the information for Fixture Block D. Enter D in the Name field and enter 4 for the number of pins. Fixture Block D also has a detection switch, so enter 1 for the number of switches, then press OK. The last step in the Fixture Blocks view is to define how the fixture is interfaced to the NX tester. To do this, it is necessary to specify which test point on the NX tester is connected to each of the points on the fixture. For the tutorial board, this assignment can be done automatically. From the Fixtures menu, select Assign Test Points. Accept all defaults by pressing OK. Now notice that each item in the Fixture Blocks view is associated with a unique test point on the NX tester. More information about interfacing the NX Tester to Fixture Blocks can be found in the NX Tester User's Guide. The tutorial wire harness contains three components, a splice, 
a resistor, and a diode. To add these components, go to the Components view by clicking on the right view selection arrow. Press the green Add button and select Add Splice from the menu. Notice that a splice named S1 appears in the Components view. Press the Add button again and select Add Diode. Notice that a diode named D1 appears in the Components view. Press Add again and select Add Resistor. Change the value to 10K ohms. Change the tolerance to 20%. Now that the fixture blocks and components have been defined, the next step is to enter the connections. To do this, go to the Connections view by clicking on the right View Selection arrow. To enter a connection, click on the green Add button. Enter the data for wire 1. From connector A, pin 1, to connector C, pin 1. The wire name is W1, and the color is black. The wire name and the wire color are optional. They don't have to be entered, but if you do enter them, they'll appear on the NX tester's display. Wire 2 goes from connector A, pin 2, to connector C, pin 2. The name is W2. The color is blue. Wire 3 goes from connector A, pin 2, to connector C, pin 3. The name is W3. The color is blue. Wire 4 goes from connector A, pin 3, to splice S1. The name is W4. The color is red. Wire 5 goes from splice S1 to connector C, pin 4. The name is W5. It is red. Wire 6 goes from splice S1 to connector D, pin 1. The name is W6. It is also red. Wire 7 goes from connector B, pin 2, to the anode side of the diode D1. The name is W7. The color is green. Wire 8 goes from the cathode side of diode D1 to connector D, pin 2. The name is W8. The color is green. Wire 9 goes from connector B, pin 3, to the A side of resistor R1. The name is W9. The color is orange. Wire 10 goes from connector B, pin 4, to the A side of resistor R1. The name is W10. The color is orange. Wire 11 goes from the B side of resistor R1 to connector D, pin 3. The color is orange. Finally, press the button labeled Add All Switches. This adds the two detection switches to the connections table. Now that there are no more connections to be added, press the Close button. Note that all connections are associated with the main phase, as seen in the Phase Properties pane on the left. A phase is a set of connections that are tested together. By default, most simple wire harnesses have a single phase named Main. To learn more about connections phases, consult the NX Editor User's Guide. Since we're now finished entering the data, let's take this opportunity to save the file. And let's uh, select an appropriate name for this program. Let's call it Tutorial. The last view in a test program is the Workflow view. To access the Workflow view, click on the right View Selection arrow. 
you're seeing the default workflow. It is automatically populated by the NX editor and it is suitable as a basic workflow for most simple wire harnesses. The default workflow does the following. It tests the harness and displays any errors. This is done in the test display workflow cell. Once all the errors have been cleared, or if there are no errors, the tester provides an audible twirl sound and displays a message indicating that the harness has successfully passed. This is done in the UI workflow cell. Next, the tester checks to make sure the harness has been removed from the fixture. This is done in the remove workflow cell. Finally, the test jumps back to start to repeat the process for the next harness to be tested. The test program is now ready to be downloaded to the NX tester. Connect one end of the USB cable to a master USB port on the PC and connect the other end to the USB port on the NX tester. In the NX editor, go to the Tools menu and select Editor Options. In the NX Editor Options window, select the computer serial port that is connected to the tester. Then press OK. The program is now ready to be downloaded from the PC to the NX tester. This can be done from the File menu by selecting Transfer to Tester. You're almost ready to run your first test. First of all, make sure the tutorial wire harness is connected to the tester as shown here. On the tester's display, make sure the cursor is pointing to Run. If it isn't, use the up and down arrow keys to make sure that the cursor is pointing to Run, then press the green button to start the program. 